Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, an English poet who lived from 1806 to 1861, which marks her as part of the Victorian era. She was a key figure in Romanticism in England. I previously read How Do I Love Thee, a sonnet that she wrote in 1845 on this show. But today's poem is called A Musical Instrument. And here it is, A Musical Instrument by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. What was he doing, the great god Pan, down in the reeds by the river? Spreading ruin and scattering ban, splashing and paddling with hooves of a goat, and breaking the golden lilies afloat with the dragonfly on the river? He tore out a reed, the great god Pan, from the deep cool bed of the river. The limpid water turbidly ran, and the broken lilies a-dying lay, and the dragonfly had fled away, ere he brought it out of the river. High on the shore, sate the great god Pan, while turbidly flowed the river, and hacked and hewed as a great god can with his hard bleak steel at the patient reed, till there was not a sign of a leaf indeed to prove it fresh from the river. He cut it short, did the great god Pan, how tall it stood in the river, then drew the pith like the heart of a man, steadily from the outside ring, and notched the poor dry empty thing in holes as he sate by the river. This is the way, laughed the great god Pan, laughed while he sate by the river, the only way since the gods began to make sweet music that could succeed, then dropped his mouth to a hole in the reed he blew in power by the river. Sweet, 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 O Pan, piercing sweet by the river, blinding sweet, O great god Pan, the sun on the hill forgot to die, and the lilies revived and the dragonfly came back to dream on the river. Yet half a beast is the great god Pan to laugh as he sits by the river, making a poet out of a man. The true gods sigh for the cost and pain, for the reed which grows never more again as a reed with the reeds in the river. When I read this poem, I think of Tennyson for some reason. I think it's because it's a poem that exemplifies the sort of musicality of a lot of Tennyson's poem and a lot of the uh, poetry that we get in the Romantic era. And in fact, that musicality itself is sort of enchanting. I think that's a good word. I read that somewhere in connection to this to this uh, poem. And, and that the enchanting sort of rhythms and musicality of the poem certainly mirrors the enchantment that Pan is attempting to, to bring across as he plays. And of course, a pan flute is an instrument made of reeds that have been tied together. And then you, you blow into the reeds, blow on the, blow on the reeds. And then of course... In the last few stanzas, around stanza six, the poem begins to reveal the effects of the music that Pan is creating through the Pan flute that he has just created. Um, and the enchantment begins to expand. It's, the, the, it's not just in sort of enchanting rhythms that Elizabeth Barrett Browning is offering, but the music itself is enchanting. It's, the sun is being enchanted. Um, the lilies are, are being revived. The lilies that had been destroyed are being revived. The dragonfly even comes back after he had scared it away by pulling out the reeds to make the, uh, to make the instrument. So then in the end, we have this, this stanza about the cost of what he's created. He's creating a beautiful thing that brings life, and yet to do that, he's had to destroy life. And so there's a sort of dissonance in, in this poem. And it's that dissonance which the true gods, you know, unlike Pan, who's just a half-god, the true gods sigh for. They cipher the cost, quote, the cost and the pain. That's in stanza seven. And it certainly suggests some questions about the nature of art creation, perhaps what it does to the person who's creating. Um, it could also be an environmentalist poem if you want to think about it. It's certainly playing with the, the mythological tropes that are, that are there um, to speak to something somewhat universal. That's all I'll say about it for now, but I'll read it one more time and you can think about those things maybe today while you're uh, going about your business. A Musical Instrument by Elizabeth Barrett Browning What was he doing, the great god Pan, down in the reeds by the river? Spreading ruin and scattering ban, splashing and paddling with hooves of a goat, and breaking the golden lilies afloat with a dragonfly on the river. He tore out a reed, the great god Pan, from the deep cool bed of the river. The limpid water turbidly ran, and the broken lilies a-dying lay, and the dragonfly had fled away ere he brought it out of the river. 
High on the shore, sate the great god Pan, while turbidly flowed the river, and hacked and hewed as a great god can, with his hard bleak steel at the patient reed, till there was not a sign of a leaf indeed to prove it fresh from the river. He cut it short, did the great god Pan, how tall it stood in the river, then drew the pith like the heart of a man, steadily from the outside ring, and notched the poor dry empty thing in holes as he sate by the river. This is the way, laughed the great god Pan, laughed while he sate by the river, the only way since gods began to make sweet music they could succeed. Then dropping his mouth to a hole in the reed, he blew in power by the river. Sweet, 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 O Pan, piercing sweet by the river, blinding sweet, O great god Pan, the sun on the hill forgot to die, and the lilies revived, and the dragonfly came back to dream on the river. Yet half a beast is the great god Pan, to laugh as he sits by the river, making a poet out of a man. The true gods sigh for the cost and pain, for the reed which grows never more again, as a reed with the reeds in the river. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks for listening. Back tomorrow with another one.